Hello and, and welcome to another round of UC predicting. This time I'm alone. Um, all my buddies who I record the prediction videos with tend to uh, quit the game shortly after. I don't know what that's supposed to be, but um, yeah, I got asked by a lot of people about my opinion on the, on the predicting, on the predictions, and, and how I would position the. Uh, my bets. I was looking for somebody to join me, but I couldn't find anybody willing to hop in in front of uh, a microphone. So I'm gonna do it all by myself today. Um, I'm gonna start right off with the, the first round. Um, the first round is basically consisting just of no brainers. At least in my opinion, we got FDH beating Riz, probably. But this will probably be the match everybody's looking for to see how well FDH can compete against alliances that know what they're doing because they played the entire their entire season against uh, alt accounts, uh, alt alliances basically, almost. At least or small alliances um, so yeah pretty should be pretty a significant match based on on which the entire bracket could fall apart that I'm predicting or I would go as uh, predicted regarding FDH and um, yeah will be OBB shouldn't be in there shouldn't be much, uh, there should be not, not much thought waste on this match, that's what I was say. The next one is a bit of an interesting match, I gotta say, because if you just look at the names, you'll be like, okay, EKW wins it, no matter what, but if, as you can see, EKW, uh, they they played only. S <laughs> they played at 7 a.m. time, so almost the entire season. No, no, they actually mix it with 100. But yeah, they're only at 63 billion power. Many of the members have left for uh, ATD. This thing isn't accurate either. Because it shows the current uh, lineup yeah just the current lineup but that's not uh, the UC lineup as many of the ATD people joined uh, many of the EKW people joined uh, ATD uh, for this UC season so considering that at full force they only had 50 people in or 60 70 and then reduced numbers they only have 50 people in I could see DSI actually pulling it off, especially as you can, as DSI do have the higher numbers, they have the okay shrelly leads, decent, and if they can, if they can win the races, they shouldn't have an issue actually with EKW, especially with the small numbers, maybe they don't even show up. If it's a bad time slot, um, yeah. If I if I were DSI, I wouldn't pick 1300. Probably not 7 a.m. either. But yeah, I'm gonna give it to DSI actually. Um, it, my entire prediction could fall apart at this position already, but yeah, I, I just don't think that the this week EKW with most of the members and, and short colors gone towards ATD. Can't do anything this, this season. Um, HRH against CPS should be a no-brainer as well, given we faced them last round already. And when we disbanded after reaching 80k points to get them uh, 40 and 50k rewards. I suspect they put more of a fight in the UC match, but 
we still shouldn't have any issues for that match. And so the O versus Kak uh, should be a fairly no brain as well. Just giving it to the hand 3 0. Um, the organization and, and the firepower just outweighs Kak's bows. Um, Matt against the German Jokers, that should be a fairly easy one for Matt as well. Given since their merge was tough, they improved the participation by quite a bit. They have the, the rel elites, while uh, the German Jokers are still struggling to get above the 90 participation. Um, but yeah, just gonna give it to Matt. Pretty straightforward. Same with ATD against Rui, it's a uh, no brainer. They'll get 90 gate, most probably. Um, same as NW1 against Toss. Should be a no brainer as well. I never heard of this alliance before this UC. How the hell did they make it, make it into UC? So interesting the alliances that are in, in UC this season are a bit weird at times. Not really, maybe not really UC worthy, one could say, but yeah. Then FDH against BDR. Um, I'm gonna give it to BDR. They have great coordination, good good timing on, on speed ups, on, on reinforcements, and on the rallies itself. They do have the leads to compete with most of FDH. And it, it all depends how well FDH can reinforce and how well they win the races and get their, their leads in the buildings. But I would still uh, give it to, to BDR over FDH. Then the next match is DSI against HOH. Um, should be a fairly no-brainer as well. I think. Um, I don't see us having much of an issue with DSI. Um, should be definitely doable. And 3 against Mad is a no brainer too, and 3 is gonna take that. Uh, ADD against NW1. I think NW1 is one of the alliances that's. That has the capabilities to beat ATD. Um, they beefed up a bit for UC as well. Mm, you got your era in. Don't know who else to be entirely honest. But they got a great lineup. They got good, really good coordination. Uh, and if, if everything goes right for them, I'm sure they can beat uh, and th they can beat NW1. Yeah, they can beat ATD. Sorry. If if they win the races, which they most probably will, get the swaps done right and then just have the reinforcement on point, I'm sure they can uh, defeat ATD. That's why I'm gonna go with NW1. Please don't, please don't predict like just. Please don't just take my predictions as, as uh, the right one and do that yourself. Uh, I feel like I'm this season. I'm going a bit more with the underdogs in, in most cases. Uh, Risk against OBV should be fairly easy win for Risk. I think um, they had a better. AC, but they are the better event lines, they're better coordinated, um, better timing and everything. Though BV does manage to get the big numbers into the events as well now. They have the strong rel leads like uh, Alatun and, and Jusarovsky. But I've, to be fair, I didn't really see anything of them this season. But just based on previous uh, encounters and in previous seasons their early time is just just not the best well, not the early time the entire event calling is not the best them losing the DPS is a bit weird as well I wouldn't have, wouldn't have expected that so 
I'm just gonna give it to to Riz. Um, or maybe could go either way though, depending on on, on races and, and swaps and everything. But yeah, I'm just gonna give it to Riz. EKW against DPS. Um, it's basically the same thing I said about EKW against DSI. Just that DPS is even stronger than DSI, so I would give it to uh, DPS. Um, I'm sure they can defeat EKW as well. And if, yeah, well, no, whoever ends up here against DPS, either EKW or DSI, DPS is gonna win against them. But, yeah, they definitely have a good shot against uh, EKW. CAC against GJs. Uh, I'm gonna give it to CAC. I don't think that the Germans have the stamina to keep up with, with CAC, with the solos and everything. Um, so I'm just gonna give it to CAC. Rui against Tost, it's gonna go to Rui. I would say, yeah. We should definitely take that one home. Next up, we have FDH against Riz. It's basically a rematch from the first round, and um, given on what I said earlier, I'm just gonna go with FDH as well again. Um, Riz has the capabilities of an upset here, but it would be actually great if they could upset them. But yeah, just based on raw firepower, FDH should, uh, just should be enough for FDH to carry that win home. Then we got uh, DSI against DPS. I mean, basically, it's, I already answered this before. DPS being the stronger alliance or DSI, better participation, uh, better coordination. Um, they did meet before and, and ADK them. So, should be a no-brainer, really. Bad against CAC. I think... Matt can win against CAC. But, I'm not sure if they have the... Um, I'm not sure if they have the stamina to keep up with uh, Tax bows and all their solos and everything, but I think they can pull it off, so I'm gonna go with Mad uh, for this one. Then the next one would be ATD against Ruri, and my bracket here, or else it would have been the NW1 against Ruri, but either way, Ruri is gonna be eliminated this round, even no matter if they play NW1 or ADD. And the same is gonna be true for Matt, no matter if they meet NW1 or ATD. This should be a fairly no-brainer decision. Um, FDH also, against CPS, is also a fairly no-brainer. Uh, shouldn't be really, shouldn't, shouldn't really be a question. And 3 over against NW1. It, this has the potential to be a very good match as well, but based on how N3O plays and how NW1 plays. I just gotta give it to NW1. Uh, I just gotta give it to N3O. Um, they're super well coordinated, they have the firepower, they have this, they are eager to spend all their speed ups in, in AC matches. So I would give this to N3O 10 out of 10 times, gotta be honest. Uh, same thing with BDR against H or H. It's fairly a no-brainer. Uh, yeah. BDR will just be this. Simple as that. Um, Alright, round five. This is an interesting match as well. I feel like we've got a shot at, at beating FDH. Um, I think we can pull it off if we win races and, and do the swaps and prevent <laughs> freeze or Altesio to get into buildings. Um, but yeah, I think we got a decent shot against FDH. 
maybe I'm completely overestimating us, or completely underestimating FDA rather. Um, but as I said, it, it all depends how well they do against RIS and then and against uh, BDR, and it's all based on that, on how we can, uh, how the, the season will, will go on. If, if you see that they already struggle against Riz, something then I, have, I would consider us having very high uh, chances of beating them. Especially considering that that would most probably be the first match that would be very costly for us if we, if we go for it. So this has a potential to be a very good match. Oh, I already went a lot with the underdogs this, this round, so it's basically already but probably already dead anyway, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do this. And then uh, <laughs> Maybe we can make the miracle work. I don't know. We'll see. And W N gets ATD. I gave I know I gave ATD I gave NW1 the upper hand in their first encounter. But I feel like in this situation, NW1 would already be very drained, while ATD doesn't really... They, they, they didn't really have a hard season outside of the one NW1 match. Um, how do you see uh, season, I mean, so far, if you look at it? So, I think at this point, NW1 will just be too drained. Uh, and I would just give it to ATD over NW1. Then again, if this this that this can already happen up here, then it would be basically the same, just swapped between ATD and NW1. Um, yeah, this is probably going to be one of the most one of the best matches this UC season. If it comes to this, it's gonna be BR against Gen 3 on round 6. They already played twice this season, I think, yeah. When in one match, N3 overpowering them by quite a big margin. And then the last match of the regular season, when both alliances had to use heroes, that's basically with an amazing, basically perfect participation and a super fucking close match. So yeah, I think this could this is a potential to be a very good a very good rematch. A very expensive rematch. But I would give it to N3O again. Just based on, on previous uh on previous matches. But then HRH and ATD that's not over right now. Uh, ATD is gonna smack us. If we even get this far and get a buff, uh, get uh, get um, get past FDH, then ATD is gonna be the nail in our coffin. Um, and then BDR against CDD. I actually think that BDR can pull it off again and beat ATD. ATD has a huge roster. For for this uh, for this season, they have good, basically perfect participation as well at thirteen hundred. So this match most probably wouldn't be played at thirteen hundred. So I would just give it to BDR as well. It's probably pretty controversial, but I just don't see ATD like if 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 BDR win the races they get they get Burgle in in, in CR Patton in, in port then I think ATD doesn't the like ATD's timing isn't good enough in a high pressure match to beat BDR I saw videos of ATD and, and they improved the rally timing in in the matches that they played, but the question is, can they pull this off in actual high-pressure situations? 
and not against alliances that don't even try. Um, so if if BDR puts enough pressure on and on ATD while they rally and just Aqua just if ATD if BDR just puts enough pressure on, on ATD while they uh, they are rallying, I could just see them the coordination of falling even more apart, being overwhelmed with the situation. Um, so I'm gonna give it to BDR as well. If we get to this situation, then we got N3O and BDR in the final once again. That's gonna be a very good match as well. Super fucking expensive for both alliances though. But I would just give it to N3O, I think. Oh, do, oh, this, this is such a this, this is such a hard prediction round to see. And I'm already I mean whatever I vote, I'm not gonna get a good good rating probably. Because I just went with a lot of uh underdog predictions and a lot of upsets based on my gut decision it's like the the most appropriate way to decide this right now because it's like it's a coin flip basically i'll just go with n3o beating vr in the final if it comes to the final it would be sad for it to not even make the final and this match can totally go a different way or everything else in this bracket that I predicted can go in a different way as well but yeah so this is my prediction uh, I've gone a lot with a lot of underdog votes don't just copy my prediction make your own uh, thoughts about it if you want the safer route I would just put NW1 uh, ATD over NW1 here uh, with ATD beating uh, BDR, but still losing to N3O, probably. And FDH beating HOH as well. Those are probably the more coin flip choices. The rest should be fairly, sh fairly certain. Maybe this can be an upset as well, Matt against CAC. With CAC winning instead of Matt. But yeah that would be all for me from from this you see season this you see pre-season um but yeah tell me what you think about my predictions in the comments uh I'll, you can happily discuss it i'll engage in, in discussion in the comment, comments as well and thanks for watching and see you when you see.